people from all over the world come to this building called the Sistine Chapel to look at the ceiling and the paintings that Michelangelo painted there. While he was painting the ceiling, he would have to lie down on his back on scaffolding to be able to paint upside down. Today, you're going to be channeling your inner Michelangelo when we paint upside down. First thing you're gonna do is find yourself a nice table or something like a table that you can crawl under. Now that you're under your table, you're gonna prepare your paper. So you're gonna need some tape and you're gonna have your paper and you're gonna tape it to the underside of your table. It'll look like this. There was already a piece of paper taped under here. Somebody might have wanted to draw a picture long ago. No, I'm just kidding. That's actually the hardware for the table. So anyway, here's my paper. And now for the fun part. <laughs> so this next part, you're gonna lay on your back under your table. And if you are gonna use paint, I would recommend laying on an old sheet and maybe even having an apron on or just some clothes that, cause you're gonna drip paint on your clothes, believe me. But I'm not gonna be that brave today. I'm gonna leave that to you guys. I'm gonna use markers and see how hard it is to draw upside down. All right. All right, here I go. I have no idea what I'm gonna draw. What's something I draw really well normally? And normally I draw horses pretty well, so. Uh, try to draw. It is, <laughs> my leg turned out so skinny. I'm in the kitchen right now and my parents are like, what are you doing? Um, so, <laughs> yep, that's not normally how I would draw a horse. I can draw horses pretty good and pretty seriously, but now this totally looks like a cartoon, doesn't it? So what I'm noticing is that, you know, I'm working against gravity. So it feels weird to not have your hand be heavy, not be able to rely on resting on your paper. Okay. So, it turned out okay, but it's a little bit silly. Um, if I can find some paint, I'm gonna uh, try this with paint. Cause uh, that would be really different. Look what I found y'all. So here I go. I'm gonna try to get under this table again with my art supplies. Normally there would be a towel or a blanket here. I'm tempting fate. So I guess I'll just try to paint my horse. You know, Michelangelo didn't have markers, so it would be like cheating, I feel like, for me, if I just did a marker. So oh, I found some paint. I'm gonna paint a green horse. Now, gravity's really gonna play a number on my paint. I might go down my brush and, and um, get all over my arm. So Michelangelo used a paint called, well, I don't know what the paint was called, but the process was called fresco. So he would sort of paint plaster on the ceiling and then before it dried, he would have to mix pigments into it for the colors. So with the different colors, he would have to actually blend the colors up on the ceiling. And he had to work really fast because his paint would dry really fast. The plaster paint would dry really fast on the ceiling, so you can only work small areas at a time. That's why we have a lot of awe and respect for Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel. Already my arms are getting pretty tired. Well, one arm's holding a phone. That arm's getting really tired. Down art. 
Think about what the hardest part for you is. Also think about what the hardest part on your body is. How's your body feel? What's achy? What hurts? What doesn't work? Did you hit your head on the bottom of the table? 